Hello, I'm Peter Robert, and today we're here to share some information on things to look for when replacing a water pump. Water pumps generally get changed due to a noise, possibly a bearing failure, a leak, or possibly a seal failure. Have you ever wondered if it's just normal wear or if something else caused the failure? How about why a relatively new water pump failed? Water pumps may fail due to contamination and corrosion caused by lack of proper maintenance or servicing of the cooling system. Failure to flush the cooling system when the water pump or other system components are replaced can leave excessive contamination and lead to a failure or a repeat failure. I can't say it enough, when replacing a water pump or other system components, it is critical to flush the cooling system and clean the coolant reservoir. Power flush equipment or thermal cycling of the cooling system with clean water three times are good ways to flush the cooling system. The most effective method is to use a coolant exchanger. Coolant should also be changed at regular intervals according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Coolant should be checked for concentration at regular intervals as well. We would recommend using a refractometer. After prolonged periods of use, the coolant can break down, become corrosive, or lose its rust preventative properties. Coolant test strips may also be available for determining coolant's acidity level. Some additional tips when it comes to coolant are, mix concentrated coolant to the approved mixture, traditionally 50% coolant, 50% deionized water. Use clean drinking water, as impurities in the water can cause a reaction to the coolant and harm the system. Again, deionized water is recommended. Keep the system full. Eliminate all air. Trapped air causes poor heater core performance and can potentially cause premature failure. Maintain correct system pressure as it increases the boiling point of the coolant. Do not use any non-approved flush agents. Cavitation is the process where a bubble in a liquid produces a shock wave when it rapidly collapses. The shock wave is strong enough to damage the cooling system components, including the water pump. The bubbles are usually caused by the pressure of a liquid falling below its vapor pressure. Cavitation is most likely at the impeller blades of the water pump where flow rates and turbulence may be high. This shock wave can cause a vibration and noise, as well as pitting, erosion, and additional wear. The pitting accelerates erosion because it increases the turbulence of the fluid flow, which creates more cavitation and eventually could lead to water pump failure. Water pump seals are a critical component in the cooling system. The seal faces are in sliding contact and subjected to temperature, pressure, and speed changes. Coolant is a major factor on seal longevity and is not necessarily designed to lubricate the seal. Contaminated coolant, depleted coolant, and poor water quality can result in corrosion and seal damage. Filming on the seal can be caused by low coolant, cavitation, hard water, corrosion, and coolant additives, which also can cause the seal to fail. Stop leaks are also hard on seals. Quality coolant and water are critical to water pump operation. Water quality varies greatly in different areas. Unclean water also leaves mineral deposits in the cooling system, which can reduce coolant flow. Engine coolants come in various colors and formulations ranging from conventional green coolants to a variety of long life coolants that may be orange, red, gold, or blue. The color is mainly a dye, but the chemistry of the coolant is different. Always check the manufacturer's service information for the correct coolant for the vehicle being serviced. When installing a new water pump, there are a few additional tips that can help ensure a proper repair. Clean all sealing surfaces. Never strike the water pump shaft as it can cause damage to the new water pump. Tighten and torque all bolts according to the manufacturer's specification. Adjust belts to proper tension according to the manufacturer's specification. With the new water pump installed, turn the hub by hand and check for rotation. After installation, pressure test the system for leaks. 
Check for sufficient fan blade clearance between the blade and radiator shroud. Use sealant tabs only if recommended. Some sealant tabs may restrict coolant flow through the passages of some cooling systems. There are several other components that should be inspected when replacing the water pump. Check the fan blades for cracks, bends, breaks, loose rivets, or damage. Also, make sure the fan blade does not have any runout. Always check the fan clutch for wear, leaking silicone fluid, bent or missing blades, and play at the fan tip. There should be no more than 250 thousandths of an inch of play. Check for worn or broken engine mounts and replace if necessary. Inspect for any damage to the radiator, including the radiator shroud and mounts. Pressure test the radiator cap for proper holding pressure. Inspect the thermostat and thermostat housing. Replace if necessary. Check belts and hoses for any glazing, cracking, swelling, leakage, or damage. Check the belt tensioner and pulleys. Check the overflow reservoir for cracks or damage. Believe it or not, all of these things can affect new water pumps as well as the old ones. There are instances where the new water pump fails due to some of the very things we're talking about today. So don't forget, flush the cooling system before you replace the water pump, use the right tools for the job, and check all other components that could add unnecessary strain on the water pump to make sure your customer's new water pump will not fail prematurely. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.